God would be when the world come crashing in. So one time, let's give it up for the DJ, DJ Eliel. I can hear myself, so I host, I like my own voice. So yes, I'm honored to host tonight, y'all. I am Advocate of Words, representing the Bronx. Tonight is a great night. We have Grand Slam champions, we have playwrights, actors, activists. One of our performers actually ran in the 2010 New York City Marathon. We have college professors, HBO deaf poets, music musicians, singers, and their paradigm shifter. It is going to be ridiculous. So, now the inspired word has not attempted to take anything over. The series has not looked to dominate or collide with any organization or subculture, nor has it aspired to be a savior. It definitely has not diluted the art form either. Its mission has simply been to add, and within that setting, a safe, classy, and productive space can be created for the performers and the audience members alike. The inspired word is this way, and that way of thinking starts at the top. So I'm proud to introduce to you the determined character who founded the series, who is a fan of the community first before anything else. Please make some noise for acclaimed journalist, Michael P. Geffner. call him a Derek Jeter, I'd call him a Babe Ruth. So that we, we, we swing it for the fences with, with this first poet. It's gonna get sick like that. He was the 2008 New York Grand Slam champion. He is a six-time Toronto International Poetry Slam champion. And he is the two-time winner of the Yale Peabody Slam. Coming all the way from another country, New Jersey. Please make some noise for Jamal St. John. All right, cool. So, since there's gonna be like a ton of fantastic performances here tonight, uh, I guess I'll just start this off real quick. Uh, right. Dedicated to the brothers and sisters in Arizona. Yes. 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 And this. Is it loud enough? Is that good? That's good? Yeah. Cool, thank you. All right, and uh, this poem is called Borderline Crazy. Sir Isaac Newton once remarked that the problem with man is that he spends far too much time building walls and not nearly enough time building bridges. Nowhere do his words ring truer than here. Here. Where they will call you illegals, tell you that you 
are trespassing on land that their forefathers stole fair and square tell you that your love of America constitutes a crime of passion tell you that aliens don't deserve inalienable rights tell you that sometimes they get mad at the desert for not killing you when it had the chance tell you that sometimes they can't sleep at night knowing that there are more Garcias than Jacksons more Rodriguez's than Wilsons knowing that salsa is more popular than ketchup and that soon they will have to keep up with the Sanchez's instead of the Joneses you will become a casualty of the war on terror seeing as how bodegas have replaced Al-Qaeda as the biggest threat to national security they will tell you that your dream of a white picket fence will soon be replaced by the reality of one made of barbed wire they will tell you that freedom only speaks English tell you to get the fuck off welfare casually leaving out the fact that you don't qualify for it to begin with you you will be called spineless despite the fact that you are this country's backbone they will recruit you then rebuke you because they're tired of seeing you steal all the good jobs like nursemaid, dishwasher, nanny, gardener, and scapegoat. Bienvenidos a los Estados Unidos, mi amigos. La tierra de la leche y miel. La tierra de oportunidad. I know by now you must be wondering why America has never been sued for false advertising. Tell them that you'd rather be green lighted than green carded. Tell them that you didn't cross the border. The border crossed you. Tell them that this that this was the home of the Braves before it was ever the home of the brave and ask them what their lives would have been like had the Indians enacted a tougher immigration policy. Yeah. Oh. you pledge a grievance to the flag of the United States of America and to the repugnance for which it stands, one nation underachieving, inhospitable, with bigotry and injustice for all who fit ever so neatly into the category of other, rounded up and rounded down to the lowest human denominator by those who have mastered the art of how to become filthy rich without ever getting their hands dirty. Tell them that the seed of hope has been planted in you. Tell them that you are pregnant with the idea of a better life and that America must submit to a DNA test as soon as it gets back from fathering democracies elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to do this poem. Um, uh, a lot of people uh, had a lot of, there's a lot of speculation surrounding uh, the death of Michael Jackson last year. And uh, he was either being demonized or, he's, or he was being deified. But I just wanted to write a poem from his point of view. So. Uh, this poem <clears throat> is the suicide note Michael Jackson should have written. <clears throat> Dear Mama, blame this on he who was my Geppetto. He made me this way. Never hesitant in reminding me of just how many strings he had to pull to get me this far. Pinocchio's one wish was my entire autobiography. My father's love always came with too many strings attached. I, too, was a puppet. Forced to wear identity crisis as a second skin told that flesh and bone were too much to ask of God. So every time I lied, my legend grew. Perhaps my biggest mistake was thinking that my life would turn out exactly like my video for Thriller. Who knew that real demons would be so difficult to choreograph? Do you know what it feels like to have the world sucker punched into you when you aren't looking? It feels like I should have called myself king much earlier. My father's been crowning me since I was five. Fear has become a song I am too scared to sing. Loneliness has reduced me to a myth trying desperately to pronounce itself 
human. I'm a dancing machine with a short circuit. Poster child for what happens when they run out of superlatives for you too early. So famous, everyone knows who I am except me, mama. Oh. You never told me that the most beautiful parts of me were the ones that couldn't be surgically reconstructed. Now, I am so plastic, Tupperware sends me fan mail, mama. You always said I was way too serious, so I only used that bleach to show you that I could lighten up, mama. They used to follow me religiously, as if my concerts were a chance to see Christ's second coming firsthand. But besides the fact that we both have fucked up fathers named Joseph, I don't see any similarities. Compared to me, Christ had it easy. He was never asked to moonwalk on water, had the good fortune of being an only child, and he was only crucified once. Oh. I am only writing this because my father is more to show up at my funeral than on my autopsy and the truth will be a tougher pill to swallow than the ones they will find in my stomach. The angels will dust my soul for fingerprints and find evidence of your silence. Why does my last breath have to be your first clue? Did you know that every time I sang I want you back, I was referring to my childhood. Mama, tell them. Tell them that my innocence is still being held hostage in a basement somewhere in Gary, Indiana, and all the money I made will never be enough to pay my father's ransom demands, Mama. I am sorry for being so hell-bent on heaven, but I would rather leave as your son than stay as his puppet, and death is the only thing scissor enough to cut these damn strings. Cool points right now. Oh. If anyone knows, I'm from the Grand Concourse yeah. on the D line. Yeah. That's what happens when you live on the one train. You think that nothing else is around. Oh. Alright, so um, this is uh, this is uh, this is called in front of the class. <clears throat> I'm standing in front of a class society has deemed derelicts and hoodlum, and now I'm their teacher. I'm writing a poem that will save the world, and they say it has to be as good as a Nas rhyme and have more emotion than Tupac did. <laughs> My class consisting of ex-gangbangers, graffiti writers, drug dealers, and students who have traveled too much in the public school system, they are my students. And as their teacher, I have traveled as many roads as they have, and I stand in front of them without fear, because they can smell fear. I am them 10 years ahead with poetry being a left turner man at 17. I tell them that road is approaching and all you do is take that road so fast your past and I catch up to you. I tell them in your metamorphosis you can change your name, your place of rest, your goals, your career, and strive but that seemed so unattainable for so many years. One student says, how? How the hell am I supposed to get there? It's easy for you to say that, but I have one kid, one gang after me, and no job. How the hell am I supposed to go anywhere but down? And I ask them, how bad do you want it? In the beginning, all I had was poetry. Everything else took a back seat. Girls, family, and work lasted part time for six months for me getting fired for writing on the job. I tell them, use your connections. Intern somewhere. Learn to live. Live to write. Write to love. Live to learn. This is the last day of your life. What are you leaving behind? What will be your legacy? And they stare at me like a rabbit in the headlights and say, I don't know. I tell them to open your chest and let whatever falls out, let it fall on the page. Let the page be a doctor. Let the page be a therapist. Let the page be a lover. Let the page be an enemy? Punch it in the face. Let the page be the best friend ever stab you in the back. Let the page be a Prozac. Let the page be a hip hop. Let 
Let the page be a rock and roll. Let the page be that fancy ride you always talking about. Let the page be that bling bling on your wrist. Let the page be the underground beat that you're about to rip. Let the page be your autobiography. Tell them who you are. Tell them they're wrong for labeling you. Tell them, fuck you for giving up on them. Tell them the life may not be worth shit now, but tomorrow gives you hope, so you won't take a life today or the next day. Tell them you're gonna be here forever. Tell them you're the ones that create beautiful art from stock reality, and it scares the shit out of them. Tell them you are loved no matter what anyone says. Tell them you are loved and you're right. Pen in hand, no case of structure, no case of spelling, no case of grammar, never coming off the page. And then the first student gets up and their mouth open wide and says, I want to live. I want to love. Repeat it a hundred times over. I want to live. I want to love. And then he asks me if that was any good. And I tell him, it's the best poem I've ever heard. Thank All you. Right.